Let's uh, right. let's begin with season six, episode seven, newbie dash, so that uh, I can edit out what just occurred. Um, wow, why would you do that to me? <laughs> because I hate. We you. love and tolerate you. It's okay. <laughs> this is this a so friendly really. stream. Um, okay, let's talk about dream slash destiny. It's a good place, I think, to start with this episode. Because it's a fairly important episode in the whole grand scheme of things. If you look at it, over the last season or so, pretty much everybody has achieved their dream. Um, Rainbow Dash is now a wonderful dream check. CMC now have marks. So check that one. Yeah. Uh, you have uh, Rarity has a uh, boutique in Canterlot. Her boutique. Yeah, her boutique in Canterlot, which she always did. That's what she said. I want to want that, and that she's achieved that. Plus, she's opening up one in Manhattan, so she's achieved that. Twilight has finished one arc and is being a completely new arc trying to teach Starlight. So you got that. Uh, let's see, what else did I have? Oh, uh, and if you look at all the rest of them, they were pretty much content as is. Um, Applejack was content just taking care of the farm uh, and, you know, making sure it does the best it can do. Pinky is engaged in party planning pretty much con constantly, so she's pretty happy and content. And Fluttershy never had much ambition to begin with, so she's, she's, she's taking care of animals, which is what she loves. She's doing what she loves. She's living the dream. So everybody is else good. is content. So basically... All the major characters in the show, this season, at this point, have achieved their dreams and are moving on to either completely new arcs, or their new arcs haven't really surfaced, or they never really had much of an arc to begin with. Dash had dreams. Yeah. Rarity had dreams. Twilight didn't have dreams, but she wanted to just be a master of friendship magic. You know, and she's accomplished that. She understands it. Um fairly well. So, I mean, each of them has kind of achieved what they were really wanting. They achieved their dreams. So, I mean, they're going to have to have some new goals for... I mean, Rarity is just kind of trailing on from her Canterlot dream by adding the Manhattan one, but eventually she's going to have to change what her dream is in order to have a continuing arc. Unless yeah. she becomes a franchise, in which case she becomes the man, and we hate the man. <laughs> the mayor. She becomes the mayor. Well, mayor. not the mayor. Mayor, M-A-R-E, not M-A-Y-O-R. Yes, she becomes the mayor, not the mayor. <laughs> which it sounds in my accent, it sounds the same. Mayor, mayor. Um, mayor, mayor, mayor. Uh, so we're going to need a lot of new arcs to make this thing work um i like the fact that the way they did this it wasn't out of nowhere i mean the fact that it happened was kind of out of the blue but they've been working on this they've been slowly doing things here and there to build her up towards this you have testing testing one two three mm -hmm. that got her into the reserves you had Wonderbolt Academy, one of the one of her best episodes. You know, it mm -hmm. probably probably her best episode. It it really shows off how good Rainbow Dash can be when she's got somebody who understands her. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. But <clears throat> one of the interesting, one of the nice things I saw when she begins this episode before we get Spitfire doing the superhero slam into the ground. Um, yeah, that was <laughs> wow. She she seems to be at the beginning very content with where she is. She wants to be a Wonderbolt, obviously, but she's okay with where she is because she knows she's paying her dues with the Wonderbolt reserves. You know, she was trying to get her excited and such. She's like, no, no, it's okay. I know I'm, I'm working with the Wonderbolts. I'm working with the freaking Wonderbolts. And one day I'm going mm -hmm. to be a Wonderbolt. It's just a matter of time. And so, you know, 
because they would be crazy not to want her at some point. Mm-hmm. Uh, but which they mentioned in this episode. Yeah, towards it's the like. End. Yeah, we were seriously it, just waiting it, on an it, a hole to open up. <laughs> yeah. It's like, dude, you save Equestria, like, weekly. Why would we not want you? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, That's like saying, I'm sorry. Sorry, Captain America, but uh, we're, we're all full up. But next time the X-Men have a slot, you're in. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We totally want to pick um, um, the guy that shoots arrows over you. Yeah, totally. Hey, 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 I love Hawkeye. He's best, okay? <laughs> me, me too, he's me best too. Avenger. He is badass. He is the, he he, is first badass. of all, he's the only Avenger who doesn't have superpowers, and yet he is the one who keeps them together. Well, I mean, Black Widow. Been, yeah, Black Widow. Well, and, no, 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 Black Widow was, um, Black Widow at least has a, um, <clears throat> has years and years she's been trained since she was a baby for this she has Never been she, she she was <laughs> trained since infancy to be a super soldier so she may not have superpowers but at the same time she does have certain powers yeah true well anyway. whereas this guy he's just you know Dude, I was I, I'm a spy who likes shooting things. But I like the maturity we saw in the first bit. Um, mm -hmm. Wonderbolts apparently just naturally fly with smoke trails. Um, mm -hmm. That or someone cooked up some brutal chili. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, spicy guys. butt. <laughs> Seriously though, the smoke is probably a suit effect uh, using the you know like trace Pegasus flying power like whatever aura they're giving off to fly, you know, they're probably, it uses that to power the smoke machine. Again, or Soren cooked up some brutal chili. Uh, oh, God. No, 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 it's the friction against their suits that causes smoke. Fair enough, but there are many That's theories. That can't be safe. <laughs> Or you could say they feel a burning sensation that won't go away. <laughs> Their medication for that. They do have co-ed be bedrooms, so... <laughs> well, they are technically adults. They can do what they want. Yeah. Uh, which was a thing, interesting thing, that the, that we see that they all have, you know, co-ed uh, co locker rooms and co-ed barracks, so, I mean, but... You know, but at the same exactly, time, you don't actually, yeah, you, you don't, don't actually exactly see have... their genitalia the same way. Yeah. So it's not as bad as seeing a. Plus, they walk around naked all the time anyway. Yeah. <laughs> and yet, Rarity plants are making money from making clothes. Well, some of them they they don't have to dress, but when they do, they want to look fancy schmancy. Mm -hmm. True. <laughs> Let's see. We got the ground shattering landing thing. Uh, the good news breaks rainbow, which really they could have, and apparently scoot size at the same time. Um, the big smile was great, though they could have pretty much gotten away with just about any big reaction they wanted to there. Uh, yeah, I would have made her faint. Uh, that doesn't seem like that's that's because you're a rare fan. <laughs> Yeah. Rarity's reaction to everything is fainting. If she just instantly rain boomed, that would have been okay too. That would have made sense. Mm -hmm. If she, you know, just instantly rain boomed, just poof, that would have been great. That would have worked fine. They yeah. they could have gotten away with anything. It was nice. Perhaps Rainbow Professionalism Dash is living up to her middle name. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, Professionalism uh, is my middle name. <laughs> It, it, it's like no isn't your middle name it, isn't your middle name like trouble or no danger something like that <laughs> yeah didn't you say your name was didn't you say your name was danger dash at one point hey i'm half hispanic i have a lot of middle names okay oh. <laughs> <laughs> 
That's okay. Hi, doctor. Hi. How are you? Oh, uh, hey. Montana C. We are talking about Lugadash. Ah, cool. Talk about, talk about the new episode. Uh, it was cool to see uh, Dash's house a little more. She's got a really cool house. It uh, does. I saw it too. Yeah. I want to live there. <laughs> that would be a cool Except place. for the falling through the ceiling, I mean, floor part, <laughs> but yeah. Well, if you were your, your pony soda, it wouldn't matter. Your Pegasus, you'll, you'll, you'd be fine. True. You'd be fine. <laughs> um, let's see. I would not. <laughs> well, unless, it was, uh, unless it was Scribble's turn to be a, um, a, a an inventor and invents away. <laughs> um, okay, we get wing balm for stiff wings. Innuendo Very commence. useful. And you end those commands. Um, yeah, of course. Uh, Spike is the butt of the physical comedy for being uh, slammed in the luggage. Uh, yeah. Um, she just wanted to take him with. <laughs> That's so true, though. And at that moment, she's like, when Spike was... She's like, that Twilight moment, gets a sidekick, why can't I? I, I just want to borrow that... him. <laughs> And at that yeah, moment, when Spike twice. was slammed into the luggage, he thought to himself, I could have been Lord of all dragons. <laughs> <laughs> and then he says, wait, are these Rainbow Dash's panties? <laughs> oh, jeez. <laughs> <laughs> Get into the luggage, huh, Spike? You know, <laughs> now that's going to color every time I see Spike with a uh, expression, it's like, I could have been the freaking Lord of Dragons here. I could have been somebody. I could have yeah, been a now I'm dealing with, but now Yeah, I'm now I'm dealing with this shit. <laughs> <laughs> now I'm just a nobody. <laughs> okay. Let's see. Uh, Fire Street retired to teach. So apparently that's pretty much the only way Wonderbolts go off ah. is they retire. <laughs> Um, guess, <laughs> except for, oh, what was his face from where he investigates? He got, uh, he got kicked out completely from any all, uh, Wonderbolt status. Let's see. I covered that. Oh, uh, there was one thing I noticed in the background in her, speaking of her home. Dash is an interesting, like, shield crest on her wall. I'm not sure what it means, but it's got uh, the top right. It might be nothing. It may be just something she threw in there. Maybe a family crest, or possibly the reservist crest. I don't know what that you know what that would look like. I know what the Wonderbolt crest looks like, but not the reservist if they have one. Uh, top right of the shield is kind of black with a gold lightning bolt, and uh, bottom left is pink with three lighter pink diamonds in them. So. Perhaps it's family crest, perhaps it's the reservist crest. I'm thinking more around the lines of family. <laughs> yeah. Probably. Could be the cute could be his parent her parents' cutie marks joined together. Ah, but that's not really it because wasn't her didn't we see Rainbow Blitz? And he was you know, he would have been blue. Maybe he was a brother? I don't know. But when we think it's her father you know, he was blue too. He was a slightly different shade, but he well, was, he, she I mean, looks, she takes a lot after her father. I mean, since it is, since it could be technically a family crest, it might actually go back generations before her parents. Yeah, I was just answering the the thought that it might be her parents' her parents' marks, which, considering you know that they're kind of Pegasus have kind of older traditions, perhaps family crests are still a thing in Pegasus culture. Um, let's see. Oh, uh, <clears throat> RD is, uh, Rainbow Dash is reverting a little bit to her more self-centered persona. Um, she's kind of gotten away from lately. 
when she <laughs> thinks about her first impression, she's really psyching herself up. Though, you know, her, she's trying to make a good impression as a as a, a, a first impression as a Wonderbolt, but I think pretty much everyone there she's already met in some form of fashion. You know, mm-hmm. she's met Spitfire four or five times now. You know, had long conversations with her. You know, she's met Soren before. She's probably met most of the the crew before. They all already know her. Um, yeah. So, you know, maybe she shouldn't have been so worried about the first impressions because they already know who she is. <laughs> They've already met you before. It's kind of awkward when you're trying to act big when we already know you. Um, mm-hmm. But I think... The important thing with that wasn't so much <laughs> that she was um, <clears throat> that she's trying to act big for them. It's they. She made a really bad first impression as a Wonderbolt with Rainbow Crash, and she that la- that nickname was traumatic for her as a child. So she's like, I don't want to be Crash. Stop calling me Crash. And that's why she was trying to act big. Well, yeah, that, that was kind of after what I was talking about. But, yeah, she does eventually do that, yeah. Um, you're right there. Um, we get Rainbow Dash Loremaster. The studying for the reservist exam apparently uh, did some good. <laughs> it was all because of that wa- that flight she took with Twilight. Mm-hmm. Um, although some of it... I find it hard to believe in that episode that she didn't know some of that, a lot of that already, considering how huge a fan she is. But, uh, um, and then we can start getting into how Spitfire is trying to kind of corral her. Um, uh, Spitfire warning her about the runway rule, though it's, it's. It's a good thing to it's 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 a good warning because we saw that what happened, but it was also to uh, pardon the, the, the pun. It was to get her head out of the clouds a bit, uh, bring her back down to, hey, think about what you're doing. Stop getting so, you know, freaked out about hey, you're wonderful. I know it's exciting, mm-hmm. but we got stuff to do. And we can't have you your head in the clouds thinking about stuff you don't need to be thinking about. We need your mind on the task at hand. Um, which she ends up, you know, Dash ends up flashing between fangirling and trying to act cool about the whole thing pretty much the episode. She's trying to act cool sometimes and sometimes she's just going pure fangirl on the episode. <laughs> which ends up getting her, you know, Acting cool, the acting cool end of it ends up getting her to forget rule one and ends up in the trash. Which, if she'd remember what what, Sun, what what Spitfire just told her, she wouldn't be there. But she she forgot rule one. I think she had this idea of mm-hmm. how it will go in her head. And well, what was it? Uh, let's see, I, I I got a quote, a famous quote. Um, no battle plan ever survives first contact with the enemy. Helmuth von Moltke, a 19th century head of the Prussian army. So that's the first, basically the first casualty of, of, of war is the plan. So, you know, don't build it up so much in your head, just go with the flow. I find it interesting also that Soren is actually the only one that asks if she's okay. Mm-hmm. Though he does end up laughing too. He actually shows Well, remember, story. they are best friends since she saved his pie that one time. <laughs> and I think s- saved his butt at one point. Yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. uh, let's see. Yeah, we get the flashback, which shows us why Crash stings so much for her. And that equestrian teachers can be a bit childish to um, put it lightly uh, they can be a bit childish oh yeah no. yeah it's like eh. 
No, you know, maybe you should. I know exactly how she feels. My asshole recess teasers are like that. Um, at which point she tries to act big and push off her responsibility for mistake onto others as a kind of defense mechanism due to a, she has a stung ego, and the calling her crash isn't helping. Mm-hmm. Also, with the with the runway scene, mm-hmm. I'm fairly certain there would be there would have been enough time for her to cross safely if she hadn't been interrupted by Spitfire. This is true. Because yes. they were they were they were fair fair distance away. So if she had if she actually sped across rather than stalling out then diving, she would have made it. Yeah, that yeah. is a fair point. And not only that, but she should have probably warned her before she started crossing. And she didn't notice. Yeah. Well, and the thing is also, if they were buzzing low, Pegasus have three dimensions of movement. They can move up two. This she, is true. She could have just flapped down and flown straight up. <laughs> it uh-huh. wouldn't have mattered where she was in the thing because she could have just flown above them. Yeah, she could have jumped and then played leapfrog with them. <laughs> yeah. Flew up, flew straight up, and she would have been fine. Like, oh, mm-hmm. I'm buzzing this the runway. Okay, I'll just fly straight up. I'm an incredibly fast flyer. I can just fly straight up. Uh, that would have been a funny moment for a Sonic Rainboom, too. Yeah, it's like, oh. It's like, crap. ah, shit, boom! <laughs> <laughs> it's like, what did I tell you about showboating? <laughs> I'm sorry, I was panicking. Because <laughs> if you notice, her rain booms are usually because she's panicked. Of course, then her nickname uh, except been, for the time wouldn't have been crash for doing boom boom. <laughs> I don't know which one of it is worse. <laughs> hey, boom boom! <laughs> I am not a hooker. <laughs> Uh, okay, and this is where we're starting into. <clears throat> you get two kind of camps with this episode as to what they think of the Wonderbolts. They either think they're jerks for how they treated her, or they tend to be understanding of it as kind of a military and a unit sort of thing. Like trying to. Uh, trying to bring her into the group. Because if you watch when they answer about what rule one is, they answer in unison. There's no there's no breaks. They're, they're a coherent group. There's no... There's less individual thought and more we are a group. We act together. We know the rules. This is us. This is what we do. And so, you know... If you're looking at the cleaning duty after after the after the first day, that may also it may may be a rule. It may be something that happens, you know, that encourages good flying, you know. But it might also be something Spitfire did to try and get Dash's ego down a little bit, kind of because if you if you. I've never obviously gone through military training, but from what I understand, the idea is we start you off with your personality. You have your personality, your ego, everything. We're going to break you down. Okay. We're going to break down you, your excess personality, ego, and everything, pride, all that stuff down. Break you down to a point where we can build you back up as part of the unit. And this may have been part of that is to try and break down some of her ego and excess pride and get her down to where she's humble and ready to accept the build-up that she needs to become part of the group, to rebuild her a little bit into the group, get her into the unison of the group. Um, Mm -hmm. But, yeah, that's that's kind of her idea. Um, AJ, during the the scene where she comes back home for the party... um, AJ shows some perspective, as usual, of Best Pony. Um, every vulnerable has a bad first day. Best background pony, anyway. Uh, <laughs> <there you go. laughs> um, 
for as much as they're trying to help the uh, the 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 main six are trying to help well main other five are trying to help they're trying to boost her up by telling her to stand out in a different way that is the exact opposite of what she needs to do and things like yeah. this anytime where you're in a formation like I was in marching band you stand out by fitting in if no one yeah. notices you in particular barring a solo obviously you've done a good job the whole yeah. idea is not to stand out especially just... and especially those kind of formations where you have to get everything perfect and do everything to the millimeter on some of those maneuvers or not only do you stand out in the wrong way but like we see at the last uh, in the very end where the storm cloud you can cause a lot of damage not only to yourself but to others yes <clears throat> yeah and she only had two days to master that shit <laughs> yeah it's it's all it's you know and there's a lot to learn in those sort of formation things like how mm -hmm. to recover if you mess up like if you fall on the ground during marching which is a thing it happens you get a you get a wet field and you slip well because mm -hmm. one time i did a right uh, it was a, it was a left slide left and uh i slid i did a bit literally i rolled to get out of the way because it was big lines moving so i rolled in between them rolled back and then got up and got back in position and that's how you do a textbook recovery is you don't you you do what you have to do to stay safe and then you get back in position there's a lot of stuff to learn mm -hmm. that. Um, and she had she took yeah. the wonderbolt training but that doesn't teach her the f maneuvers for particular formations and stuff so she uh needed to learn all that in two days and she spent all her time putzing around trying to look cool or trying to look like her friends trying to well <laughs> she which is how she figured well if they don't think i'm cool maybe they'll think my friends are cool because my friends are cool yeah which that was cringy as all get out it mm -hmm. seriously was I'm but it like, was kind of funny eyes. It was funny, but it was cringy. It was sitcom funny. I guess you're, I guess you're just like, I guess, oh my god, I'm going to cry. But I yeah, can't. Yeah, funny I, part I, is I that the voice actor, the voice actor that voices, um, well, Random Dash, she also voices AJ, so she's probably told, okay, so w we want you t to voice AJ, but not really AJ. We want you to voice Rainbow Dash pretending to be AJ. <laughs> Which I think she did a good job on. Mm, that, that was one she, she, did a, she did a great job because it's so easy to jump into your other character when you're voicing multiple characters like that. But in order to voice one of the characters, uh, one of your characters voicing another of the characters and managing to keep it distinctly the, the character you're supposed to be voicing, that is a good challenge. Especially yeah. in character. Especially when the biggest difference is the accent. <laughs> and that's yeah. why they're professionals. Yes. Oh god, that, that whole scene although just in her made case, go, mm. Although in her case, the biggest key was keeping the vocal fry. Yeah. Yep. Uh, let's see. Uh, her stunt showed her lack of maturity, but realizing the kind of organization the bolts are on the inside helped her to understand her place. Like, they've all have, they all have you know, a shared problem that they had on their first day, something they messed up, because they all mess up in the beginning, and, you know, they they learn to accept that, yeah, they made a mistake, but they're learning, and everybody makes mistakes, and, you know, moving forward from it. Um, some may say that the bolts are jerks in this, and I can see how, uh, but breaking down the ego and subverting the goals of the individual to that of the group is important to any military group, and especially formation work, which I kind of already went through. But that was, I think that's basically everything I had to say about the episode. Didn't I didn't about... really, I didn't really think they were jerks. Yeah. So much because I mean, 
sure, calling her crash and stuff, but even with, like, friends and stuff, how many times do we call each other by teasing nicknames based upon something stupid we've done? Or a stupid typo or shit. So... Yeah. Or we give each other garbage they, for something or other, you know. Like Exactly. We, we, we and give, they we were give, just trying to bring her in. Yeah. You know, and, you know, like how often do we mess with Madrock about his singing, you know? Exactly. I, I don't yeah. remember any time that we ever do Yes, that. and... That, that would just be... And odd. how... And how often we make uh, fun of um, AJ background pony. <laughs> exactly. <sighs> but, yeah, I mean, it's not that we don't like each other. It's that we used to be friends and we mess with each other a little bit. It's just what we do. Exactly. It's what friends do. Yes, they're going, yes. For the most part, yes, we're very nice to each other. Mm-hmm. But occasionally... Sometimes gonna, a little too nice. Occasionally, we're going to poke fun. We're going to we're gonna mess with people just, just, just for a laugh and just to kind of... As a bit of camaraderie. Mm-hmm. And I mean, yeah. you see that in any, any cohesive organization where they fuck around, but at the same time, they are genuinely concerned for each other's well-being and part of their fucking around with each other is that camaraderie and stuff. So I don't see how they're bad, you know, I, I don't see any way they were bad in this episode. If anything, it was Dash that was the dick. Well, and, you know, <clears throat> I mean, if you, yeah, I mean, when Fleetfoot came over and was trying to give her, a, you know, kind of a, hey, you'll do better tomorrow. You, we all have rough first days. You know, mm-hmm. she was still trying to be all, you know, big Rainbow Dash. And, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm not a, I don't have a problem. I don't have a problem. I don't have a problem. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, that's a thing. Um, but At this, least they yeah. didn't call her Rainbow Douche. Mm-hmm. Uh, Which she really was in this episode. <laughs> yeah. That's gotta be kind of funny though. That um, apparently the the Wonderbolts jackets they all have mm-hmm. their less reputable nickname on the uh, on them. You know, so I didn't. Has she? I guess that have they never. She never seen them in just their flight jackets, because that would have been kind of weird to not notice that. Hey, that's not Spitfire on there. That's whatever. Yeah, that's not Sora, and that's Clipper. You know, which people have had a lot of fun trying to poking out what uh, <coughs> what Spitfire's uh, nickname is. You know. There have been some interesting decisions as to w- w- what that was, but uh, I won't go repeat them here. <laughs> this is still a, yes. a relatively um, every for everyone sort of thing, though that are awesome. Occasional curse words. Yes. <laughs> um, so, um, that's a about all I had to say about it. Um, overall, some cringy bits, but it was good to see her understand her place in the Wonderbolts, get a place in the Wonderbolts, and we'll just have to see where they go with this. You know, how often is she going to be in the show? How often? Do, do all the Wonderbolts perform in every show, or do they perform, you know, oh, you, you know, well, one... They did say that, oh, we'll only need you for this show. Yeah. So maybe it's a localized thing. I mean, just kind of like how the military has different stations all over the country. They have, you know, she's stationed at, oh, you're stationed at Ponyville. Because that, um, 
Ponyville's a pretty happening place, so you'll be our Wonderbolts, Wonderbolt uh, thing here. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. You know, she may be invited to more to tour more. You know, I don't know why mm-hmm. they only needed her for that. But eventually, I have I no guess, idea. I guess she eventually. I guess she'll be promoted to touring all the time. But for now, she got her. She got her Wonderbolts uniform. She got her. You know, her her jacket. She's got everything. She got her. She's she's a Wonderbolt. She's 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 living the dream. Uh, any last thoughts we have on this episode before well, we close? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, yes, if the, ponies if look sexy have... in skin tight uniforms. <laughs> you clopper. <laughs> <laughs> if they have a actual barracks within the vicinity, then you would think they have a specific station, uh, specific stations around because unless they're all focused in or around Ponyville then I think they would have different offices in different areas around Equestria where they're touring yeah it didn't make a lot of sense to me that that I mean it seemed that the the barracks the the Wonderbolts barracks are at the academy, the academy, the barracks, everything is right there. You know, the HQ is right there. You know, but you know, but yeah, I don't know. Yeah. The whole locative issue on that is a little questionable. Yeah, we don't quite know where the academy really is. It's in another dimension. <laughs> <laughs> hey. But somebody had to make his skin tight uniforms. <laughs> I'm just glad it was me. <laughs> <laughs> Only you uh, would be paying attention to their skin tight uniforms. Oh, baby. You just wanted. You just want Soren so badly, don't you? Yeah, no, I know, I don't, I don't got any more on the subjects of skin tight ponies. I mean, the episode. You, you think Soren is sexy in that skin tight uniform? Uh, sure. Yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah, totally. <laughs> <laughs> We've broken him. <laughs> it's just so, so sexy. 